mantras have been chanted in the Indian spiritual thought for ages. Long period of time. Because since, they say, since the language has come up, the mantras have come up. And it's not just us who chant the mantra, the whole nature also chants the mantra. The rustling of the leaves, the chirping of the birds, the whistling wind, the whole universe is in its own frequency of vibration. And that vibration frequency is called Nada, N-A-D-A, vibrational frequency or vibratory frequency of everything and everyone is called Nad. Today I have some papers here which we will take later. We have six sheets so you all have to share and we will chant different types of mantras later. But first I want to talk about how the word is created. Word means not the word, but word, W-O-R-D. According to Indian spiritual thought, the word is created in four stages. I will write down on the board. Just understand this because if you understand this, you will understand how we, how mantras work. Now I am speaking to you. It's called the gross sound, the dense sound, sound that you can listen to and sound that travels through the air as vibration frequency into your ears. This sound is called Vaikhari. I will write down, don't worry. This sound is called Vaikhari. Vaikhari means gross, manifested sound, sound that you can hear. But before these syllables were uttered by me through my mouth, through different permutations and combinations of my lips, my jaw, my tongue, where was this sound? Yes, this sound was in my mind. As what? As thought. Now thought is also a language. I was thinking in English and that's why I spoke in English. Sometimes you think in some language and speak in another language. Doesn't matter. But before the word is uttered, the word exists as a thought in your mind. It is called Madhyama. Madhyama means central. <coughs> Before the word was created or sentence that created which was then catapulted out to you, what was there? An idea. Before the thought Elaborated, there was an idea. The germ, it's called the germ, the seed, the bija. There was an idea. The idea was in form of an image or something else. But there was an idea which was quickly formulated into the sentence as a thought, which was quickly thrown out of my mouth as somewhere. This idea is called Pashyanti. Pashyanti. Pashya means to see. To see, literally to see an image in the back of your mind and that create that image in the sound, uh, sorry, sentence, verbal sentence and then throw that verbal sentence out through the mouth 
in form as vocal sentence. So we have Vaikari, Madhyama, Pashyanti, but before that flash of image came, what was there? You all know this word. Pure potential. Where did that image come from? The image came from a sea of raw fundamental consciousness out of which popped out an image, out of which popped out a sentence, out of which popped out a vocal sentence. Vaikari Madhyama Pashyanti this is the way every sound vibration, every sentence is created. And it happens so fast in our mind, so fast in our system, that we don't even know. Now, keeping in consideration of our topics that we have discussed, All in this whole section comes our emotions, comes our beliefs. Sometimes we don't consciously create thoughts, like in dreams. In dreams what happens? Your conscious mind is sleeping. And then some thought comes up from somewhere else. Sometimes we don't even know where the thought came from. Comes from memory, comes from past samskaras, which hide in our system in form of imprints or you could say flashes of images, which are then communicated as Madhyama and then they come out of our mouth as well. That is why it is very very important to be aware of what you speak. When Patanjali talks of Yama and Niyama, Patanjali talks about Satya and Ahimsa. The Ahimsa as we saw the other day is not just about not speaking bad but also not thinking bad. Because the speaking is just an output of my thinking. Just because you are not speaking badly about others doesn't mean you are not thinking badly about others. And that's why, and that's where exactly mantra is used. Mantra is a science of sound vibrations that cleans this whole spectrum and takes us back to the root vibration, the para, P-A-R-A. -A. And this root vibration, this fundamental vibratory frequency is denoted as O. If you understand this Parapashanti Madhyama Vaikari, you will understand how many useless thoughts we create, how many unneeded times we speak unnecessary things. And that's why for a yogi, speech is very valuable. A yogi will not speak things unnecessary. There is always an agenda. Unnecessary because every word that you create, every sound that you create is nothing but expenditure of your energy. Now imagine in the day how many things we speak just to speak. If we speak half as much as we speak in the day, 
how much energy can be saved. 80% of the time we speak rubbish that has no utility. It's not really communicating anything essential. Now imagine it's not just your physical sound, it's not the energetic expenditure of your tongue moving and your jaw moving and your neurons moving. It's also what you carry within. If I want to speak something to you, a general casual conversation, there's so much amount and so much energy expenditure. Remember, a thought consumes energy. Don't think the thought comes free. Every thought that you generate in your mind consumes energy. Every thought is a little pulse, a little beep in your brain and that electrical impulse needs energy. Now imagine if you are speaking so much in the day, so many pulses, beep, 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 beeps of electrical impulses, unnecessary wastage. Now that is if you are consciously speaking. But many of us, even when we are quiet, the mind is still beeping. The mind beeps because the seed of the beeps or the seed of the pulse of electrical impulse is already there in our system. What is that? We saw it. It is the samskaras. Mantras help us exactly with this. Mantras help us to get out of our samskaras. And that's why the definition that we saw of the mantra is, mantra is something that liberates the mind. Because heart is not to be liberated. Heart is already shining bright in true potential. The mind is something that needs to be liberated. And mantra, mananat trayate, something when chanted that releases the mind is mantra. So the operating field of mantra is the mind. 